Everybody does this. You have no idea how many students I have to sit there and be like, dude, stick to this. Don't worry about the results. And the ones who can make it a couple weeks just doing that, they see the most improvement. Welcome to the Imagine What's Possible podcast. I'm Malcolm Scoville, the founder of Imagine Golf, and let's get going. In this series, I'm trying to break par for the first time in my life over the next seven weeks. Follow along and see if I fall on my face doing it or break through a huge golf milestone. Well, let's, let's jump into to high level for this session here. We're in week two, seven weeks. When do we start this? What day are we on? We are on I think day we, six. Day six. All right. We're we still started on Tuesday last week. It's Monday. So okay. We're moving slowly. We're moving. All right. So high low, what do you want me? You want me to share my high? As yeah, you go first. Okay. I want, I want to hear the high for the swing changes and the low. Okay. So we're a week into this and the high for me was someone who grew up with like this ADD, far off the ADD spectrum. My mother would often say, with Mal, it's one, two, too many. It's like, you, it's like one or two things, it's great, but you got more than two, it's, it's too many. So your teaching methodology is one thing. So you gave me a just, just focus on strengthening your grip. And uh, it's going to feel awkward. And you gave me like 300 swings and you gave me homework every morning, wake up and do this. I did it a lot mm -hmm. more than that. I geeked out on it. So the high was, I knew exactly what you were, um, I stuck to the plan initially <laughs> for, for several days, <laughs> for several days. And then I was like, and you said something like, send me a video. And I sent you a video and I recorded myself. I'm like, damn, like that, the, the reason we did that was because my club face was too open and my club face was still super open in the video. And I'm like, all right, Brian, this is not working. Like I thought the whole reason I was going to close this down was like, uh, what, what I was going to strengthen my grip was so my club face would be more square coming through impact. But it's, I'm still at the last second having to flip my hands, even though my, my grip is more square. So, mm -hmm. so my, my high was like, I, I, I was hitting my pitching wedge at the range with this new grip, 158, 162 yards. I mean, it was like th 25, 30 yards further than usual. I mean, phenomenal. The club face is a little more closed. It might not look like it, but it is a little bit. Well, it is also like promoted a lot more shaft lean for me. And I, I like that, right? I like the, the feeling of uh, addressing the ball with some shaft lean and like, I'm already going to be compressing the ball. So that mm -hmm. was high. And the, I think the low was like, I was still, I was, I was confused because I was like, why the, why am I still um, not square coming into impact with this strong club face? And then I called you and kind of was like, WTF, Brian, it's not working. <laughs> uh, but it was working. I was hitting the ball further, but I couldn't work it. I couldn't figure it out in my driver, my, my three wood. So that's my high low. So, <laughs> that's the high low. Um, my high low. So high low is mine regarding you or is yeah. it regarding me? Well, do my, do me first. It's regarding you. No, it's about you. It's about you. Um, so I'm going to start with the low, right. starting with the low. Right. The low was when you texted me, Hey, what about this? It was that video of the guy sitting and turning. Okay. Now that's all good stuff, but you went off the deep end and you decided to watch other Instagram videos. You're like, what about this? Can we apply this, 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 this? All of a sudden you're off topic. And if you go to a PJ tour event, you're not going to see Rory walking up and down the range, talking to other players. Hey, what are you working on? Oh, you're working on. Okay. I'm going to go try that. Maybe that'll work in my swing. They have their things they stick to, and they just work on that. And it was a little bit frustrating because I told you, I said, okay, this is it. You're just going to hit balls. You're not worried about the results. Just do it. Just get used to the grip change. And then all of a sudden we we're off topic, which is easy. This, everybody does this. You have no idea how many students I have to sit there and be like, dude, stick to this. Don't worry about the results. And the ones who can make it a couple weeks, just doing that, they see the most improvement. One, two, too many. I literally can hear my mom's voice right now. Yeah. So that's, yep. so that's not uncommon though. No, it's not uncommon. Everybody does it. I used to do it when I played on Latin tour. I did it all the time because if I didn't see a perfect shot, I was like, what did I do? I did something wrong. And so it's very, very easy to do that. And why, usually why when golfers do we do, do that? that, what is the reason that we do that? Why are so many amateurs and, and pros prone to trying to boil the ocean? It's, it's because we expect a swing change to instantly result in perfect shots right away. Okay. 
And that's not the case. When you change your swing, you're changing your movements. So you're moving differently and you're not gonna start to hit the golf ball super, super well until the movement is the same. If your swing changes every single time, it's gonna be difficult to square up the club face. If you swing it the same way every single time, even if things are off, you're gonna start to hit the golf ball fairly well. And so as golfers, that's what we do. If it doesn't instantly produce perfect golf shots, we think this isn't right. And we're looking for the quick fix and the quick fix. Good luck. People spend their whole life just like, I'll try this. I'll try this. I'll try this. No one thing just works. It's like, you got to know your swing and then you just stick with the system and then you just do the same thing over and over and over again. And right. it's silly. It's dumb, but yes, that's why that's ultimately why. All right. Um, I think that's what we got to work into this. If we take other people through this seven week accelerated yeah. process, it's like you have to acknowledge the human brain is a tendency to try to do too much at once. And you have to just, mm -hmm. it's really one thing a week. I mean, that's kind of what we're, it sounds like we're working towards. So, yeah. Um, all right. Well, that was the low, any highs? The high, the yeah. high was when we talked yesterday and you were like, okay, I got it. Boom. This is what we're doing. I got it. And part of that was, you know, I would put some of that on me as, I didn't necessarily like sit you down and talk through like, okay, you're going to want to tinker. You're going to want to do this, blah, blah, blah. I mean, we might've talked about it a little bit on the last podcast, but part of that's my fault. But yesterday when we talked, we FaceTimed, you were like, okay, I got it. This is all I'm doing. I'm in. And that's, that's the challenge. That's the hardest part about getting better. If Steph Curry was sitting there shooting threes and every time he missed one, he tried to change his technique and like switch things up. He wouldn't be Steph Curry. Yeah, I got to say that is a huge thing about your coaching setup right now. And um, you couldn't do it with like 10,000 people, but being able to text you and get quick feedback versus being at a typical one hour lesson where you're like, I can't really remember like what was going on on Tuesday, but like, here, have a look at my swing and see where it's at. But I, yeah. there was a specific thing I was like, needed to figure out. And like, you helped me see I was rolling my wrist still. And mm -hmm. I just, instead of twisting this way on the backswing, I needed to do the opposite. And mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy that DJ video that I sent you, that's what he's doing. It seems like, yeah. is, is that he's, what he's doing? He's twisting. Yeah. He's twisting this way. At Let me switch way. this up. I got my, I got my club here. I'll kind of show you. Right. Yeah. So you with the stronger grip, this is, can happen when people strengthen their grip, it feels like now the club face is going to be too close. So they're going to want to open it. Your brain subconsciously wants to do that. And so in your case, you tend to roll this club too flat and inside. Your arms are rotating this way in the backswing. What we see in a lot of the best players is this right palm here stays looking down at the golf ball or it stays on this plane line for most of the backswing. It doesn't roll open. And so that was kind of your other, your other swing tendency. So really we're working on two things, but only two things. It's the grip being a little bit stronger and then getting this back swing a little more, you could say the shaft be a little bit steeper versus flat and rolled inside. That's, that's kind of the gist of it. And now it's getting you to stick with that. And that the feeling for me there is, is some Instagram videos, like imagine you're holding a bucket of golf balls, like, you know, there's mm -hmm. no balls in it, but what I'm doing is I'm, throwing the bucket over my shoulder and yep. like instead think about pouring it out like in like basically like as you as you go to the backswing pour the pour the bucket out um uh, towards you basically yeah. is, that, is that would that is would you agree with it's, that i would agree with that 100 it's kind of like okay if i hold this club it's a steering wheel we can turn it left we can turn it right people who roll it inside open the face tend to turn it right in the backswing they go this way yeah. So you have to feel like you turn the steering wheel to the left. Right. And this steering wheel turn is going to get the club much more on plane yeah. in the back. Side. And the club base left rolled open. So for everybody listening, is there, because this is such a common thing, is there any successful golfer that has rolled the club face open? And Yes. Like, yes. Who? There are. Who? There are. Well, rolled the club face open. They rolled it inside. Lee Trevino rolled it inside. But the club face doesn't necessarily open. It's still I mean, closed. I think that's Phil, the difference. Phil, roll, Phil rolls it open. Phil also has incredible hands. So there, there are some anomalies. Right. There's some anomalies. Phil rolls it open, and then he steepens it and closes it down. He just has incredible hands. You can get away with that. 
But the majority of guys don't do that. And as a coach, you have to look at what the majorities do, not necessarily the anomalies. Like I'm no no coach teaches somebody to swing like Phil Mickelson. Right. They teach guys to swing like the best players in the world with the most common things, you know? Well, let, let me yeah. admit something else. So this is how crazy the brain like that loves inertia and doesn't want to change is. So I was committed to you. I was going to change this grip, strengthen it up. And then I'm looking at Bryson on some random Instagram video. And I'm like, hey, Bryson's got a weak grip. So yeah. maybe I'm more like Bryson than Brian. Like maybe. So <laughs> like I was like looking for ways not to make this uncomfortable, painful change. Yeah. I did stick yeah. with it because like I, I, I've studied psychology. I knew what I, I knew. There was a little like, you know, sa saboteur in there. But what do you say to guys that, that like, OK, I have a chat with my saboteur that's like, hey, maybe Malcolm should, um, you know, just swing it like Bryson single plane. What, what do you say about, about guys that have a weak grip? So you can have, you can totally have a weak grip. That's why I explained we just would have so to you add do both, a little yeah. more bow. Now, the thing is with your, with your open club base, you could totally play with the open club base, but that means you can't rotate your body as much. If you have a ton of rotation, the club base is going to be open. So you have to learn to slow down your body. And that matchup is much harder to be consistent with than if we just squared up the club face and allowed you to rotate first. Got it. And so that's the thing with, with the grip change, grip changes are the most uncomfortable change you can do. That's yep. just, that's just how it is. And so going from a really weak grip to just a neutral grip, it's not like, I don't, I don't want your grip to be strong. I just want it to be normal. Yeah. So that the club face, cause you move really well. And then we don't have to move the way you're, we don't have to change the way your body moves. And so anyone who's trying to make a swing change, it's going to feel uncomfortable for two weeks, but people aren't willing to stick with it for two weeks. <laughs> just like, just like you, the tendency was no, like this is, this feels too uncomfortable, but our goal is not to get you to play better next week. It's to get you to play your best golf in seven weeks. Right. So we have time. That's why the goal was work on these swing changes for probably two weeks. And then it's get into play mode. We're like going to completely separate it. But if we mess up these first two weeks and you tinker and we don't get anywhere, then we're kind of stuck in a weird spot. And so yeah. that's why it's important to get back on track. Yeah. I think that the, the metaphor, like on track, like I'm thinking about, we're on a highway and there, there's freaking there is exit signs everywhere. Like there's Chick-fil-A <laughs> over here. There's like, I mean, you got five guys, you got, you know, whatever top golf, all these different things just saying, come off this highway instead of focusing on exactly what your coach is telling you to do, do all this other stuff. So that metaphor is going to be helpful for me, particularly in these first two weeks. And, um, yeah. All right. So, so I, I'm also like, whereas we're doing this, like I'm, I'm seeing a methodology. It's like yep. two, there's going to be one or two swing changes that every golfer can make to yep. hit, to hit their next major milestone. And the problem is they're not going to do it unless there is there's a to-do list and a not to-do list. So you're yeah. like, Malcolm, just do these 300 swings. Last week, we didn't talk about, now, you're not allowed to go on Instagram golf. You're not allowed yeah. to look at anything for the next week. So yeah. um, so there's a, I think that I'm just excited about that being a part of this. Like there's a do list, to-do list each week. And a don't and do. Yeah, and a don't do list. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's talk about our, our to-do list this week because you, you, yep. talk, you talked to me yesterday. What, what have I got? So... In week one, your focus was pretty much just on the technique. I didn't care at all about how you hit the ball. Like I didn't care. You might've cared, but I, my goal was to get you to not care. And you still cared a little bit, but you, you were pretty good. Um, now we're switching to, it's going to be about 60% technique focus. So we're still going to be focused more on technique. The other 40% is going to be more on, you're going to play, you're going to like hit shots to different targets and play a little range game that I've created. And so here's what I want you to do. Okay. You're going to go to the range. Can you get out every day or like what? Four days this week. Is that a good number? Yeah. I also have the hitting net. So yeah, but I can, yeah, yeah. I can, okay. I can, I can go to the range. Um, I think I can go to the range three days this week and I can uh, hitting net every day. Okay. So, so if, you need, if you need me four times, I can do it. If I'm going to hit this goal. So you tell me. Yep. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to walk you through it. I'm putty in your hands. So your net, you're going to spend 50 balls a day hitting into your net. 
working on, so 50 balls a day into your net, working on kind of this backswing, not rolling, not rolling it. Okay, so steering wheel turn to left. And then you're just gonna make that grip, like we said, like 2% stronger. It's not 20% where it feels horrible, just 2%, okay? Yep. That's gonna make the club face like one or two degrees more closed, which is not super obvious, but it just will. Okay, that's yep. gonna make it slightly more closed so that those occasional right misses are gone. So 50, 50 swings a day into the net, working on those two things. I love then, 50 day. Then when you go to the range, I don't want you to worry about the backswing, okay? Don't worry about trying to make the backswing perfect. You're not even gonna film your swing at the range. You're only gonna film it in your net and send me videos, okay? Yeah. And when you hit balls, you're gonna go through your warm up, get loose, and then you're gonna pick a target at 50 yards, 100 yards, 150 yards, 200 and 250. Okay, so pick a target at each of those yards, 50 yards all the way to 250. And you're gonna hit three balls to each target and then you move on to the next distance. And your goal, so say the 50 yard target, the first one, your goal is to hit it a smidge left of the fly, okay? So you cannot miss it right of the pin. That makes sense. You take the pin, you're like, okay, I'm gonna hit it just left. Next one, you're gonna hit it just right. And then the third one, you're either gonna hit it just past it or just short, okay? This is kind of skill training. Then you're gonna do the same thing at 100 yards. Then you're gonna do the same thing at 150 all the way to 250. Okay? And this is gonna get you more out there focused versus swing focused. Okay? Okay. But you have to get those 50 swings in into your net. Yep. So your net is for only technique focused. Doesn't matter how you hit it. All I want you doing is working on not rolling it inside, kind of getting that steering wheel turned left in the grip. And then at the range, it's like time to perform. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. I totally and get so it. So this is this is going to kind of shift some of the practice so that you're not thinking, I have to do this in my swing to get the ball to go there. Because that's not what we want. That's not how we play. Um, yep. the, only, the only thing you're allowed to think about when you're at the range is tempo and target. Okay. Well, I guess that take like two things, mm -hmm. but you, we want to have good tempo. Okay. You tend to, if this is the backswing and this is the downswing, you tend to change direction from backswing to downswing too quickly. Mm -hmm. We just want to be smooth in transition. Okay. That's going to help you out a ton, but your What's goal my is hack. What's my like, all right, you know, get past the, the low IQ. Um, the, well, the, 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 I've done it a hundred thousand times. So what's the, what's the speed boat? uh motorboat way to get to a smooth transition it would be it would be so first off you gotta understand if this is a swing set okay this is the back swing this is the down swing we want our tempo to match this up and it floats for a second mm -hmm. your tendency is you get to the top of the back swing and you instantly try to change direction too quickly mm -hmm. so you're just going to feel a split second almost a pause you could say just for like a second like a you're not going to actually pause, but that's just going to be your feel. It's going to help you complete the back. Okay. It might not even look that much at all. Is there any tension at all anywhere in your body, in your transition? You could almost like, feel like the club's weightless for loading. a split second. Yeah. Weightless for a split second. Right. That's it. Right. Um, you know that big Lebowski but, scene where he's like, the dream, he's like flying. He's like the dreaming. He's like, I don't know. He's tripping out or something like that. But it's like, yeah. it's like there's some, uh, you just got to float like, you know, you've used that word before with me, yeah. but it's a hack for me is like, all right, hit it 50%. You yeah. just, just hit 50%. And like that, I, the reason there's a big transition is because I still have this ball bound thing. Like I'm still trying to hit the ball as mm -hmm. opposed to swing the club. And yeah. when I practice swings, I don't have a jerky transition. So yeah. this is a mental game thing for me. So we don't, we don't have a lot of time left, but this is a big one for me for this week. What? I'm maybe I have to tackle it next week, actually. But this idea of my practice swings are smooth and flowy, mm -hmm. and my actual swing is now like it's a different tempo. Mm -hmm. So you must see that all the time. Mm -hmm. So what what is the hack there? To well, it's really to bring the smooth te tempo. It could just be all right, like Freddie says, hits everything eighty percent or seventy five percent. Yeah, um, I don't know. Is, it, is the what do you what do you what? I've been told so many times to just slow down your transition and it, that doesn't work. So yeah, like I, need, so, uh, I need to override that. Yep. Yeah, I got you. So a really good thought 
And this coach I was working with at the time, I qualified for the U.S. Junior Am. And he knew I was going to be very nervous. And what happens when you get nervous? You just yeah. swing hard and you get quick. Yeah. He told me every single shot I hit, no matter the yardage, I'm trying to take two yards off of it. So the, the thought of taking two yards off, that's not, because if we try to swing 70%, we're just going too slow. But right. the thought of taking two yards off each shot, you're not going to actually hit it shorter, but it's subconsciously it's going to make you just be a little bit smoother. Love it. And that's the best thing you can do. Not try to hit it far, just two yards off every single shot. That's going to be your magic. That's what I always try to remind myself whenever I'm under the gun. It's just two yards off. All right. That's big. All right. So I got 50 balls a day. Uh, into the net. Into the Te net. Technique. Yep. I, I think that this is another big thing for this like model that we're kind of you know building on the fly here is if every amateur did 50 balls a day into their hitting net, which everybody can do. I mean, literally, yeah, everybody mm -hmm. can find time to it. Then, um, and they only work on one thing a week. Like that, that is a- They're going to get better. Rep. They're going to get much, so much better. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 50 reps, you know, like, you know, if you did 50 push-ups a day, you'd be jacked. So- Yeah, I know. Um, and then ch it's checking in, sending the videos, making sure you're not, you're doing it the right way. All right, yep, so you can only there. send videos into the net. Right. Into the net, that's it. That's the Got only, but you're not allowed to film your swing at the range. Got it. All right. So three, I got three range sessions. Um, and, um, it's, uh, 50, hundred, 150, 200, 250, three balls each left, right. Mm -hmm. And then just, just past it or just short of it, but intentionally. And, um, uh, not, not focus too much on this change for this week, which now I got the grip comfortable and I'm, I'm, um, I'm going to turn in the bucket the other way, turn into the left. Yep. Um, but um, your goal at the range is no thoughts at all. Right. You're just going to grip it. Right. And you're trying to hit that golf ball at the target the same way if you were playing darts. Yeah. You're not thinking about what your hand has to do. You're just focusing right. on where you want it to right. go. So you need to be really focused. Yeah. It's like focus training. That's going to help you out a ton. Tempo and target. Tempo right. and target. I got two different types of practice. Yeah, the big T's. I got, I, got the, I got the technique practice, which is 50 balls a day into the net. And then mm -hmm. I got the tempo and target practice, which is at the range. And yep. uh, that's three times. Um, and then if you can get out and play at the end of the week, I think that'd yeah, be good. Yeah. We need to get that ball rolling where you're, you're yeah. playing so that we can, you I know, can do that. talk about the mental game and what you're thinking out there and everything. Yeah. And then I'm going to actually get um, uh, Daniel to come out with me and record like, you know, it was like nine, nine holes in 90 seconds things you see on Instagram, Perfect. It's like kind of yeah. a quick cut. And so like, that'll also put me accountable to like be on camera and um, yeah. get some of this stuff filmed. So, all right. Well, we got podcast number two here under wraps. I got, um, next time I want to hear your high lows personally too, but all right, uh, I'll come ready. Um, all right. All right, man. So, so when do I, when should, when do your clients send you these videos? Like when should I send you the next one? I don't want to be annoying. Like, oh no. S send me one video every day. You hit balls in the net. Okay. Well, that's every day. You're one video at the end of the range session. Right. So at the end, so you're just sitting there working on it. Right. Just work on it, work on it, work yeah. on it. Send me a video at the end and I'll just kind of weigh in a little yeah. bit on it. Okay. But that's the only place your swing matters. Right. Your swing only matters there. All okay. Right. That's also oh, good accountability. If I got to send you a video a day at the end of my 50 balls, it's going to make me make sure I do it. Yep. Um, exactly. All right. It's Malcolm Scoville. Thanks so much for listening to today's podcast. And I got three quick asks. Number one. Type in a question if you have one for Brian or me right here in the comments inside the Imagine Golf app. Number two, follow at Imagine Golfers on Instagram and Facebook and also X, formerly known as Twitter. And number three, tap that share button and share this podcast with a golfer in your life. Keep imagining what's possible and we'll see you back here tomorrow.